In this episode, we're going to take a look at shortest path algorithms. Uh, so previously, we looked at traversals. So how do we, uh, how do, what kind of algorithm do we use to just find all the nodes? In this uh, lecture, we're going to talk about how to find the shortest distance between a pair of vertices. So there's a couple of different ways that this can be done. And one of these ways, um, one of the class of shortest path algorithms is a single source shortest path. So starting from a specific node, what is the shortest path from that node to all the other nodes? Uh, another type of algorithm is called the all pairs shortest path. So it computes the shortest path between all vertices in a graph. I'm going to refer you to section 8.3 for the single source shortest path. There's actually two algorithms that are stated there. Uh, one of them is a Dijkstra's algorithm. The other is uh, sort of a generic uh, shortest path algorithm. The one that I want to talk about specifically in this lecture is the all pairs shortest path. So the uh, algorithm that we're looking at is uh, one that was conceived by Warshall, uh, but then implemented by both uh, Floyd and Ingerman. Um, and the basic idea behind this algorithm is the following. So suppose I have two, so suppose I have this graph here. Uh, it has three nodes. Uh, the weights on the edges are D1, D2, and D3, and the vertices themselves are V1, V2, V3. Okay, so the question ends up being, what is the shortest distance between um, nodes or vertices V1 and V3? And there's two things that we can look at here. And, and remember that these, are, these edges are weighted, so the distance D3 um, could be perhaps longer, uh, more expensive than uh, the distance D1 plus D2. So it could be shorter for you to go through um, vertex V2 than to go directly from V1 to V3. So, uh, you know, given that... Um, you know, we have this type of graph, this three-node graph, uh, we have this decision to make. So what is the shortest path between V1 and V3? Is it that direct edge, or is it the two-step traversal that goes through V2? Well, what we can do is take this same idea and generalize this um, for, uh, for larger graphs. But let's first take a look at um, sort of the internals of this. So let's say that I have the adjacency matrix, uh, weighted matrix shown here on the upper right, uh, and I have these, uh, uh, this node from V1 to V3 has weight D3. So again, I have this question, you know, what, uh, what is the shortest distance between V1 and V3? Is it, you know, going directly or is it by going around uh, to V2 first? So let's say that we get to this point where we, we find out that D3, the value, this weight, D3, is actually greater than the weight D1, D2. Well, what the algorithm does is it uh, modifies the, uh, the weighted matrix and replaces the entry for V1, V3 with the value D1, D2. So that's what we have here at the bottom is this V1, V3 being replaced by D1 plus D2. Uh, okay, so in this, uh, in this algorithm, this all pair shortest path algorithm, this, this idea gets generalized from not just having three nodes, but having many nodes. And so what you have to think about here is, suppose I have nodes, uh, or vertices J and K, and, vertice, and vert vertex I. Uh, and that there is a path that goes from J to K, and it could go through many different vertices, not just a direct um, path. And the same thing goes with goes for the the path from J to I and the path from I to K. So these squiggly lines then represent the fact that there could be many vertices in between from the uh, in between the path from J to K. So uh, when I'm uh, presented with uh, this uh, general case, I have, you know, when I'm, whenever I'm um, comparing uh, any two vertices and finding the shortest path between J and K, I have this question to ask or this question to be answered. So is it shorter 
to go from J to K through the path that has uh, weight D3? Or is it shorter to go from uh, J to I first and then from I to K? Uh, so is the distance or the weight for taking the path that is weighted D1 uh, to I and then going from I to K through the path that's weighted D2, is that shorter than going through uh, the path that has weight D3? So it has the same basic idea here that you have the shortest path between vertices J and K, and so either you have the path with weight D3 or you have the path through I with, D, uh, with weight D1 plus D2. So that's the essence of the all pair shortest path algorithm. And the algorithm itself is actually pretty elegant. It's very short. Um, and uh, the idea here is that it works by checking this shortest path so far between J and K and then comparing it against the path uh, between uh, the path, well, comparing it against the, the path between J and K through every other vertex I. So, um, actually this should read uh, comparing it against the path between J and I. No, oh, no, this is correct. Uh, so, com compares the, uh, the distance between J and K going through D3 uh, against going from J to K through vertex I. And this is through every other vertex I in the graph. So, if it can find a path that is shorter than, uh, than what it currently knows about as far as getting from J to K by going through some other vertex I, then it'll take that and, and change the, uh, uh, the weight matrix uh, accordingly. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is that the algorithm, uh, when it's dealing with these, uh, these weighted matrix, the matrices, it doesn't actually give you what the path is. It just tells you that there is a uh, that there is a path from uh, from you know let's say in this case v1 to v3 uh, that has weight d1 plus d2. But it doesn't tell you what the actual path is. So what you get in the end with the uh, uh, with the weighted matrix is just a list of of all of the, um, the shortest paths between different vertices uh, tells you what their length is uh, but doesn't give you what the actual path is. So the algorithm is actually very short. It's very elegant. Um, so it's basically this uh, triply nested loop. Um, so it has three nestings and at the very lowest level nesting we have exactly that uh, uh, that little algorithm or that, uh, that condition that I showed you before. So um, it checks to see whether or not the weight uh, that's currently stored for going from J to K is greater than the weight that would be uh, obtained by going first from J to I and then going from I to K. Um, and so if it is the case that whatever is recorded in the weight matrix is larger than uh, then the weight from going from J to I plus uh, the weight from going to I to K, then it'll replace that um, the, it'll replace that cell or re replace that part of the weighted uh, matrix uh, with the new value uh, that it uh, has computed. So it's actually a, again, so it's a very short algorithm. The one thing I want to point out here is that it, it is a big O of uh, size of the vertex set cubed. So it is a, uh, basically an n cubed algorithm. A uh, few things that you need to be aware of as far as setting up the algorithm. Um, you do need to have a weighted matrix. So this is an adjacency matrix with edge weights. Uh, the, um, uh, the zeros, uh, so on the diagonals for the uh, um, for the nodes, the, those are marked with, uh, with zeros uh, because the diagonals represent um, uh, the distance between a node and itself. And then in every other cell where there is no edge in the adjacency matrix, uh, you place an infinity in, in those cells. So uh, just a very large number. 
So what this ensures is that, you know, initially, since you don't have knowledge about what the length of some path is, if you set it equal to uh, infinity, then if you find some other path that is shorter, then it'll, um, it'll replace the infinity with that shorter path. And again, the algorithm is uh, big O of uh, V cubed, or the size of the vertex set, or the size of the graph um, cubed. Um, so anyway, this, um, what you'll be doing with one of your assignments is implementing um, this, particular, uh, uh, this particular algorithm, um, this, uh, uh, this all pair shortest path algorithm. Um, that uh, again uses the, um, the weighted matrix. The last thing I want to talk about here just real briefly is um, this idea of uh, centrality, centrality metrics. Um, the um, two different kinds of centrality metrics that we've actually seen uh, in uh, one of your assignments is uh, our degree centrality and closest centrality and I just wanted to give you a sense of what these are. Degree centrality is um, the number of edges connected to a vertex um, divided by the size of the connected component that that vertex resides in. Uh, and again, this, uh, this size of this connected component could be smaller than the size of the graph if you have disconnected components. Uh, so what you would do with something like this if you're computing uh, degree centrality is that uh, you would count up the number of edges connected to a vertex in the adjacency matrix. So just look for all the ones in an adjacency matrix and then, and then divide that by the size of the connected component. Second metric here is called closeness centrality. And what this is, uh, is uh, a measure of uh, uh, how close uh, the vertex is to all other vertices. Uh, given that you have sort of a weighted matrix um, for doing this computation. In the first, uh, the first metric here, you only need to have an adjacency matrix. In the second metric, you do need to have a, uh, a weighted matrix. So you need to have, make sure that you have uh, the matrix, the shortest path, uh, all pair shortest path matrix for computing this. Uh, what this is, the computation of this is... Um, uh, you basically uh, take the size of the, uh, of the connected component and subtract one from that. And you put that over the sum of all the distances uh, of a particular node to other, other nodes. So this is the sum of all the distances. So let's say that an, a vertex has, a, has three, uh, uh, or sorry, a, a graph has three nodes, and one of the nodes is distance one and distance two from uh, the other two nodes, then the sum of those would be three. Um, and so, you know, computing the centrality then would just be a matter of counting up, uh, if you have a weighted matrix, counting up all the values in a particular row to get the bottom part, and then, subtra and then um, subtracting one from the size of the connected component for that, uh, for that vertex. So anyway, you'll be using this, um, uh, these metrics in one of your assignments. Um, so, anyway, so that uh, that concludes this episode. Um, the uh, uh, the remainder of or the next uh, thing that I'll be uh, lecturing on, as far as graphs are concerned, is, is something called uh, minimum spanning trees. Uh, but uh, before that, uh, we'll be looking at some examples uh, in Visual Studio. Anyway, that concludes this episode.